In this episode, I head to the island of Gili T, literally the definition of a beach town with sand across most of the island. I stayed in my own private villa with pool, quenched myself with a sexy coconut, used one of the only ways around the island, which is a pedal bike, went snorkeling and viewed the underwater statues and turtles, and checked out the party side of the island. So if you're feeling the vibes, you won't want to miss it. Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to my final episode of my Bali travel series. If you happen to miss my previous episode where I was in Ubud and I found out how animal poo is converted into coffee, yes, I drank coffee made from poo, visited and learned all about the wonderful rice terraces where you can also ride high on a Bali swing, touched a gecko, got half naked and got a body scrub, performed a ritual in a holy Balinese temple, and chilled at a day club. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave a card above. Now in this video, I leave my time in Ubud and catch a boat to the Gili Islands from Padang Bay. Now there are three Gili Islands to choose from. I just chose Gili Trawangan or Trawangan, however you pronounce it. I just thought that it just offered a bit of everything. You can either choose a fast boat or normal boats. We took just the normal boat, which didn't take too long around about an hour or so, just enough for my mate to film me sleeping. You just wait. But the sea wasn't rocky at all, which I was a bit worried about, as sometimes I can get boat sickness, but you can have the option to go on the rooftop for more of a vantage point. Now on Gilly T, there are no vehicles. The only transport here is either walking, pedal bikes or horses. I had research before coming here and a lot of the people said the horses weren't looked after properly, so didn't like the idea of using one, so just decided to walk. It's a very small island anyway. One side to the other is maybe a 40 minute walk, so I felt walking to the accommodation wasn't a big deal. After about a 20 minute walk from the boat dock, we made it to our accommodation. We stayed at Golden Villa, a really peaceful place away from the noise where you stay in your own private villa, equipped with your own pool, own private ensuite rooms and kitchen too. We got it on Airbnb and it was so cheap. Me and my mate shared it and it was about £36 a night for this spacious place all to ourselves. <laughs> we jokingly said it was our honeymoon to see if we got any extra treatment and they nicely decorated my bed for me. <laughs> they have bikes you can rent here and on arrival they gave us a refreshing coconut which really helped after the boat travels. And boy do I love coconut water. Feels so good. Straight after, we rented out some bikes for a couple of days to explore the island and literally cycled around the perimeter of the island because as stated before, it's really not that big. So it was nice to just cycle around and see the sights. Although most of the island is sand, it can be a struggle at times to cycle. It feels like you need thicker tires. We took a pit stop off to get some drinks and came across this bar slash mushroom and weed bar, which I was surprised to see as weed and drugs are illegal in Indonesia. I think it's because there's not really police on the Gili Islands and it's a bit more tolerated, but still, I, I don't want to touch the stuff as you just never know. There's hefty fines and even prison time you can face, but I still appreciated the play on words this bar used. We had a late lunch on the beach, then chilled until dinner time, where we went to a seafood buffet and I just drowned myself in calamari and shrimp. Oh my God, it was so good. And then we checked out some of the nightlife by going to a few different bars, which are really all on one side of the island. They're all really close to each other, so you can't miss them. You could probably do them all in a few nights if you really wanted to. There's a few beach bars as well as indoor bars too. And I was expecting it to be a very young crowd, but it was a bit of a mix to be fair with locals and foreigners. It was no getting drunk for me as we were up early the next day for a snorkeling boat trip that we did with a small group of people. We sailed to a few different snorkeling spots, checking out different fish and coral. First on our stop was the popular tourist spot, the underwater statues called the Gili Menu 
underwater sculptures or bask nest. It consists of 48 life-size statues of couples hugging intimately with each other and lying down in a circle to symbolize the circle of life, according to the artist. Not only is it a popular tourist attraction, it also does good for the sea as they're made from an environmental grade concrete designed to create reef where coral can grow. However, it is a bit spooky to come here because they've been cast from actual people. It adds to the realness and literally feels like people you're swimming above. If you want good pictures without people, I'd advise coming early in the morning or just get in a private boat. Around the statues and the islands, the waters can get choppy, so I do recommend wearing fins or a life jacket. Next up was seeing a bounty wreck. Although, to be honest, if the tour guide didn't point it out, I wouldn't have known, as it's not very clear in the water to even make it out. Yeah, I still don't even know what it is. Next, we went to a couple of different coral reef spots, and to be honest, I was disappointed again, as where we was taken, there wasn't really much to see. I wasn't dazzled at all. I've done a lot of snorkeling in different countries, and this is probably the worst location for it. I'm sure it was just the spots we were taken to, however, and there's probably better ones, surely. We then took a pit stop off on the island of Gili Menu and visited a small turtle sanctuary set up initially by one man to help and save the dwindling turtle population in the Gili area. He nurtures the turtle eggs until they're about eight months old and then released. And I gotta say, seeing baby turtles, man, are they adorable. They just melt your little heart, seeing their itty bitty little arms and legs flapping around. Oh, they're just so cute. And there's tons of the little fellas here too, including some big ones as well. We then went to our last snorkeling spot and that was to see turtles and we actually came across one. My tour guide snatched my camera out my hand and went to film one and decided to film in portrait. Like, for goodness sake, what is wrong with you? If you're gonna go and do something, do it right. Oh, it was so annoying as he got nice and close up to one too. Oh, I've only just tilted it sideways and it was in landscape. Ah, oh, so annoying. Now, like all things in the sea, you're not supposed to touch them and keep some space, but it's just such a joy seeing these guys swimming. They're probably up there with some of my favorite reptiles, I think. And then later on, after our tour was finished, me and my mate was just casually relaxing in the sea and we spotted a turtle so close to the shore, just munching away at the sand. He then swam up, popped his head out of the water and went back down again. <laughs> what a cutie. Normally, you gotta go finding these things, but this one just happened to be there right in front of us. After lots of swimming, we chilled back at our villa where my mate introduced me to a mosquito repellent as we had a few in our villa. It's a really cheap device that is in the form of a coil that you light and provides a slow burning smell that is supposed to repel mosquitoes and it does work quite well. I had never heard of them or even seen one before so I recommend them when you're next in Asia. Later that evening we chilled at a bar with some live music. The guy playing I can only describe as an Asian Johnny Depp. <laughs> he was a cool guy and then we checked out some more of the nightclub scene. The next day was our last day on the island, so we just chilled really and just caught some rays. Definitely recommend this place though, as you get your own pool. It's just so nice not having to share. And then decided to have another relaxing bike ride around the other side of the island where it's very quiet and scenic and just showcases all that lovely white sand. There's lots of places to take pictures here for the gram, which provides those normal looking barley pictures you see online especially the barley swing in the middle of the sea, which I tried looking ages for, to which surprisingly most have been taken down. I only saw this one across the whole island. And then I randomly held a little crab. They're funny little things. I did tell you it was random. And then the next morning, it was time to depart the island. However, as it had been raining and contrary to what I said at the beginning of the video about using the horses as transport, we kind of had to as it was a bit muddy from the rain and also we was running late for our boat. 
So apologies for that. However, I didn't see any violence towards the horses. And then it was back on the boat, venturing back to Bali, where we then finished our time in Uluwatu. I heard good things about this location as it was supposed to be a chilled place, full of nice beaches, cliff tops, and surfing. We only stayed for a day or two. You know, it was more of a filler day just to see it before going back to the airport. We spent most of the first day just chilling on Uluwatu Beach. It's quite small and chilled and managed to spot some surfers. Well, surfing, which was cool. The next day we went to Sulaban or Sulaban Beach. I mean, I wouldn't really call it a beach. It's more of a cliff point of bars and shops and restaurants. Then there's a small little cove where the sea comes in, which makes for some good pictures. But that's about it. To make your way down to the cove, you have to trail your way through narrow alleys and pathways where the shops and bars are, all selling your normal souvenirs and clothes. However, just watch your step as you have hundreds and hundreds of these weird black and yellow caterpillars. Oh, that looked really gross as they're literally everywhere, just on the floor, on fences and railings, on walls, just everywhere. You will then be met with a staircase that leads you down. It does look quite a bit run down here and overgrown with bushes and vines, but once you make it down, it is quite cool as you're just encased by sheer cliffs and mini caves to explore. And then in the very near distance, you can see the cove where the sea is constantly crashing into, which makes for some cool pictures here, just like this one. But yeah, that's pretty much the beach here. <laughs> you won't spend much time here or Uluwatu altogether, to be honest. Just a couple of days or so, then probably move on, I'd say. But that's it for my time in Bali. It was a great two to three weeks here and did lots of things over these past five episodes where I think it just offers a bit of everything. So I really do recommend coming to Bali if you haven't already. In my next video, I'll be heading to the Philippines. Now I have been there before, but to be honest, the weather in Bali in January is, uh, although yes, it is hot, but it's just too cloudy at times and I just want that, you know, pure blue sky and blistering heat on me. And uh, yeah, I, I, that's why I thought Philippines, let's just go there. You know, I know it's good there. The beaches are just way better. However, it didn't turn out to what I expected. <laughs> Find out exactly what I mean in the next video. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this Bali travel series and I'll see you soon. All right, bye.